jam this in this opening. I just told you how soft the mold is. Copper's not a real hard steel, but it's a hell of a lot harder than cardboard. So you always want to put things in, crack it open, and clamp it shut. But before I do that, I want to do two things to find out. I assume your ground rod connection is going to be somewhere on the outside perimeter of this building. Some of them are actually on the inside. Some are on the inside. So I notice we've got our four out laying here. It's been run over by trucks and people are kicking dirt on it, so it's going to get dirty. There is a roof over here, but there's not walls. I don't know how wet that spot right there got, you know, if rain's coming in, but this copper will wick up water like a straw. So you want to do two things. One, you want to use something either like this. something like this to clean your conductor. This is great for cleaning ground rods and it will do the wire. And you know I kind of forgot to say when to do it. This is the important part. Uh, or uh, you can use this uh, V-shaped brush because it, you know, it, it accommodates different size conductors. But you want to get the strands, you want to get all the dirt out of the strands of the conductor. Then this is an important part for your safety. You want to preheat the copper conductor in order to evaporate any moisture that might be in the conductor out of it. So you'll never be able to heat this copper too hot, so don't ever worry about overheating it, but you definitely want to make sure that you get the moisture out of it. Now a little short three inch stub like this is going to heat up really quickly. Your longer runs, if you feel like there's moisture in it, you might want to take a little bit longer time of, of uh, preheating. For a piece of bus or vertical steel or any other flat metal surface, you want to use the card file brush, scrape it and clean it real good, and then because there's Up that metal. Try not to burn the gloves off too badly. So, in a nutshell, you need to heat everything that you're working with. Absolutely. Metal, right. ground rod, wire, preheat it all. Steel beam, the more heat you get on it to start, the better connection you have. The less moisture, the better connection you have. Because here's the thing if there's moisture inside this conductor, You've got a drop of water in here in the middle of our wealth of our molten reaction. It's going to heat up to 4,500 degrees. When, when water goes from liquid to steam, it expands a thousand times its size. So it will kind of expand quickly in the middle of that mold and it will shoot molten weld, weld metal out all over the place. So you want to prevent that because that's where you could get hurt. Now, it's not so bad anymore with the Cadwell Plus because now you're six feet away. We used to be three inches away from that reaction. You couldn't move quick enough to get out of the way if something went wrong. So we've cleaned and preheated our metal. And as I mentioned, and, and you discussed from uh, when, I, when I trained you at, at the office, there's a metal rasp, which is the ideal way to scrape the red paint, whatever it is, off of these beams. So scrape it down to some bare steel and then hit that with a, a torch to burn off anything that's left. The GW, does our um, tank have a trigger on it? The, the tank we have does have a trigger. It's a, it's a turn on and a trigger one. I think what's nice about this one versus most is that it can be turned upside down, sideways, and will keep on working. It doesn't depend on gravity. And, um, and the handle, the, the, the nozzle is a brass nozzle and it never heats up, so it's, it's you know, you don't, you don't burn yourself if you bump into it. So I'm going to go ahead and put Bottle opener in the mold. Some of these bottle openers aren't machined precisely. Is there a reason for the bottle? Is there a reason for it? 
Nice it's just a nice souvenir. It's more it's more fun to use than a than a two two pieces of wire. Yeah. It is a piece of marketing. You know, you go home and open your beer with this. Every time you open a beer now, kind of what I was thinking about. For the rest of your life, you're going to be thinking of me and my Cadwell train. You know, the beer's in the little pit there. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to keep our mold level when we're doing a flat surface. When you're doing your T connections, you want to keep it level when you're doing your ground rod on the steel beam. It's going to bolt to that beam flush up against the beam so it will level itself out. And the reason you want your mold level is because this is based on gravity. In the reaction cup, it's going to form that molten copper and aluminum oxide. So if your mold's tilted sideways, some aluminum oxide can run into where you want the connection to be. So you want it as straight as possible. Now, you can actually be pretty successful if the mold's tilted about like that, about a 30 degree angle. If it starts getting more, it's, it's not going to flow properly. We have our cup. We bang the edges. Those don't have to be open. Absolutely not. They should not be open. If your igniter goes bad, can you still use the torch like that? I have. Like if the batteries go bad. If the batteries go bad or the cord goes bad, I will. We'll, like you had the one that was open, that's what made me think of it. it. You can't light the weld metal, but if you light the paper that's on top and it starts burning, it'll heat up enough to light the weld metal. Okay. So it's kind of odd. You, you, the weld metal lights at 1,750 degrees. The torch only puts out at 600 degrees. But when that paper burns, it heats up that metal strip, and then it melts in there, and it, it'll, it'll light it. So it's possible. It's, uh, it's it possible. is possible. It's safer. I, I really, I mean, here's the one thing about um, lighting it with a torch. You've got molten metal that's designed to melt steel, and you've got a steel canister under pressure with your gas in it. It's highly unlikely that something will splatter out with enough heat in it to melt through that, but if it does, it's a problem. So, so it's always easier for me to just hold this like so and and plug this in. It's very difficult to, it can be done, and it's not very difficult, but it's these little igniter strips that I'm plugging the cord into. And by the way, the cord is no right side up or wrong side, it's just a flat slot. So, uh, that. There's not an open button that can be pushed while you're doing that. Well, there is a button, but there's, 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 that's a good question. So what many people do, when you press this button, you have to hold it till it blinks. I'm not plugging it, okay. It's going to blink six or eight times. Then it goes solid. And then it fires. So it would take somebody that long holding a button. But if you're worried about it, and for safety, many people do this. Heated up to 4,500 degrees, but another good thing about the, um, the the graphite mold is it dissipates that heat very quickly. It acts like a radiator dissipates the heat. So my rule of thumb is when the glow goes away, nothing's molten anymore. If it's still glowing and you pop the mold open, there's a possibility that that beautiful weld you just made is now going to just pour out onto the ground. So wait till the glow goes away. <laughs> you can pop the mold open. And what's left, I'll just do it down here, I guess. There's the sides of our reaction cup. 
there's a liner around the edge, so that's why only the bottom of the cup burned out. A ceramic liner. This stuff, this brown rusty stuff, was the shiny aluminum that was in there. Now it's aluminum oxide, which is rust. And this is our Cadwell connection. Now, I didn't preheat the mold, so the edges of this connection, in my opinion, are kind of rough looking and coarse looking. So, I wanted you to see that. Once the mold's heated up, that's because of little jets of moisture coming out of the mold from the inside that made that coarseness. And then we've got this, the riser we call it, which you just give it a bang and the riser breaks off. And we have a nice connection. I got a bottle opener. What's that, JW? I got a bottle opener. Yeah, you got a bottle opener. Now, if one of you would like to do this, we can. Can we make a couple of those? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah, and actually, actually.